This is Mark from Audit Sense, and in this episode of Audit Trails, I'll be discussing NIST 800171 3.1.1 control, which is access control requirements. So I'll start with that, and um, this security requirement is focused on it's, uh, the actual control says to limit system access to authorized users, processes acting on behalf of authorized users and devices, including other systems. So what does that mean in plain English? A few things. So really, this is centered and focused on who is allowed into the system and who is not allowed, and making sure people that are allowed into the systems can gain access, and people that are not allowed or authorized to the system don't have access to the, to the, to the organization or to the system. So it's a very simple, fairly straightforward control. So if you read the, um, the discussion of what it's looking for in additional clarification, it's going to be looking for access control policies. So in here, there is a need for policies. Again, who is allowed? And, maybe, and the who could be different types of people, different roles in the organizations may or may not have, have uh, certain access, maybe identity. Uh, you know, individual people, John can have access, but Mary can't. Uh, so the first thing, if you're doing an assessment of 3.1.1 from this here, 171, is making sure there is a policy in place, just indicating who is allowed and who is not allowed. And this access uh, and authorization isn't just people. It talks about users or processes acting on behalf of users and passive entities or objects. What does that mean? Well, processes acting on behalf of users. That's essentially saying, hey, there might be batch jobs. Maybe they get run every night. A lot of systems do have what's called system level accounts. Um, maybe your database server runs under its own user ID. So that's a process acting on behalf of users. So you want to make sure that this access control and this limiting isn't just individual people, but if there is a, a, a system account, that needs to be taken into account. Then here, passive entities or objects, for example, devices, files, records, and domains. So the easiest thing I think of is things like a printer. So we need to make sure the system is taken into account in terms of policies and, and actually actively allowing or disallowing, in this case, or this example, a printer. So we need to make sure and, and clearly define do printers have access to the production network, things like that. And then this control talks about that the, app, the access enforcement mechanisms can be employed at the application and the service level to provide increased information security. What does that mean? So what it means is it could be the service level itself. Service level is network ports or maybe simply access to the entire system. So maybe you need to have authorization and authentication uh, to even log into the machine. But then once you log into the machine, maybe if you go and run the Office application, whatever Office application you're using, let's just say QuickBooks, for example, that application, that software may require a separate username and password or some sort of additional authentication. So when you're doing an assessment, you want to see what are these, what are these policies, make sure that the policies do address individual people, shared accounts or service level accounts, and other objects, machines, uh, like a printer or, or other types of appliances that may not necessarily be an actual person, but it, it is some device that accesses or has to access some part of your system. And then also as part of those policies, digging a little bit deeper in making sure that what type of authentication is in place. Is it service level? Is it just logging into the machine? Or do individual applications have their own authentication? And then 3.101 talks about other systems include systems internal and external to the organization. So let's say you have a third party um, system 
uh, that um, maybe it's some partner of yours that you communicate with it, you're transferring data back and forth. You need to make sure that those other systems are also included as part of uh, as part of limiting the system access and providing those access control policies and procedures. So one of the things as an auditor that you want to look at is where is the list of third-party organizations uh, which which have or need access or some sort of, uh, of information or data transfer. And this is often can be done in something called an FPPS, Function Force Protocol Services Document. And it's basically a document which which lists all of the external entities and systems that your organization communicates with. Now, all of this overall, it talks about the definition and enforcement other than those determined by account type or address in the next requirement, 3.1.2, which we'll talk um, in the next episode. What this is saying is this is purely focused on who is allowed into the system and making sure you have the right enforcement for who is allowed in and making sure you keep out the people that are not allowed in. This is not necessarily permissions as far as if you have an authorized user who can do what. That comes into the next one. So 3.1.1 is who is allowed in, who is approved, and who is not approved. And that's it for this. Thank you.